There's my cap. It's a grease cap. Right. I'm gonna work on this pin here. It's a cotter pin. I'm going to straighten out. Alright. Care if it gets all warped or bent. So there's your cotter pin. Next, I'm going to take off this castle nut. Sure. Oh, there's your castle nut. Oh, here we go. Hold on. I can get it. Check it out. So there's a disc here. I really should just go ahead and remove the caliper, but this seems to be coming out, so let me show it to you. There we go. There is uh, this little retaining metal disc. Okay. Oh yeah, there's a uh, retaining bracket over here that's been bent to hold the caliper bolts and stop them from backing out. So what I have to do is straighten that bracket using a punch and a hammer before I get to anything else, before I can remove the caliper. I think in the meantime, I'll go ahead and remove this brake line and uh, remove this brake, uh, braided brake line with my flare nut wrench. Flare nut wrench is the correct tool to use in this case because it's going to prevent any rounding off of your fastener. And it should drip a little bit into my cup. It's going directly into that cup. Perfect. It's almost off. Let's see if it's can come off the rest of the way by hand. Yep. So uh, nice. Let's pop that right out of there. All right. So see, this is a retaining bracket for these two fasteners. When you tighten down these fasteners, you actually pinch up. You move up these the ends of that bracket like this, and that holds the fasteners in place so they can't you know come out they can't unscrew on you so what I need to do is flatten those flatten these ends here I'm gonna flatten them back up so I can actually remove these fasteners and free my caliper my socket to get in here and loosen these up. <laughs> Top one. Bottom bolt and the top bolt and the, there goes the caliper. Awesome. So the caliper is now off, and I should be able to just pull the hub and rotor assembly out. Here it comes. I have to loosen these nuts, these four nuts, so that the hub can separate from the rotor. All right, but firstly, let's take a look here. I've got the bearing. Here's the bearing, and I don't see any shims attached to the bearing. Let's take a look here. Usually the shim would be right here, but I don't see a shim. Oh wait, the shim is inside, so. There was a shim right here, okay? There was a shim, then a bearing, just like that. What else? 
um, in here is this guy. We can separate him later. And then you've got your bearing guide. All right, so let's go ahead and undo these fasteners so we can get the hub off of the rotor. So the hub should separate from the rotor. Yeah, I may want to remove that stuff first. So let me try to remove these fasteners. Get the one. Look at that look at that you guys so there's the rotor oh there's the rotor right here um it's obviously trash but the hub we're gonna clean it up we're gonna clean it up and and get it with new bearings and new seals and everything so uh, let's do that so right now i'm gonna pump this guy out pliers i'm gonna bite down on that seal i'm just gonna kind of give it a tug These seals are really, really tight in there. There you go. So that's the seal. Came right out with some force. Right. So here I have my larger bearing, the inner bearing. They still look in remarkably good shape. Look at that. I, I, I probably never had to change these. It, I mean, it's smooth. It's rust free. Oh, well, um, doesn't make noise, but you know, it's always better to change them after so many years anyway, so I'm changing it. Okay, so there's the bearing. And then this guy, I do want to remember which way this guy goes. It looks like he goes in with the tapered end down uh, through the back, right? So the tapered end is down that way. Okay, so here's the spacer guy I told you about. There's a bunch of old grease. And that's about all there is to it. And then there are these... Um, bearing guides in here that I'll have to drift out. I'll have to remove these. See right, one right here and one right there. So what I'm going to do right now is clean up this hub, get it totally as clean as I can, and then put it in WD-40 uh, rust de-rusting soak overnight so that tomorrow I can uh, put this bearing together. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and add this hub and all the other hardware that I don't have new pieces of. Uh, you know, the lug nuts, other hardware. Remember that washer that was behind the cap? The cap itself, all that stuff's going to go into the rust soak overnight. So let's look at how it seems tomorrow. Let's take a look at it tomorrow. much better look at that <clears throat> rust free I love this stuff this WD-40 rust remover soak is really nice so now I'm just gonna rinse this off and uh, then I'm gonna wipe it down get it dry add acetone and that should do it let's do it
Let's drift out those uh, bearing guides. All right, here we go. Start with the lower one. Oh, there we go. All right, let's do the other one. Ready to do the other side here. I like these little grooves, it makes it very easy to do. Back, forth, back, forth until it pops out. All right, it is out. Look at that. All right, so it looks like this thicker side uh, points in and the thinner side points out. So that's good to remember, okay? Because this side is broader than this side. So it's because it's a tapered bearing. Next, I'm gonna set the hub out in the sun, uh, in direct sunlight so that it heats up the reason for that is when when the when the, it heats up, the it's going to expand a little bit because molecules expand in the heat, and then I can bring the bearings out from the freezer, which should have shrunk due to the cold, and then the bearing uh, guides will fit better into the hub. So I'm going to set it out for a couple hours in the sun. In direct sunlight. In fact, I think I'll turn it this way. And that is in direct sunlight, so we'll just give that a couple hours. All right, I've set the uh, hub out in the sun for a few hours so it can warm up a bit. Uh, let's see. It is feeling a little warmer, so it is feeling nice and warm. It's probably expanded. Uh, the hub is warm. The bearing guide is cold. It's in the freezer. So now I'm going to try to press the bearing guide in. Uh, let's try it. All right, now I'm going to use my punch. So I did use, I did I was able to push it down. Now I'm going to use my punch to push it down even more. Perfect. Perfection. Now, I'm going to set this back in the, out in the sun, warm it up a little more, and then I'm going to put the other bearing in. The second bearing is fresh out of the freezer. Let's open it up. And let's go ahead and press. 
again, thick side down. I'm going to try to set it into place evenly. Use this guy and evenly even pressure but uh, let's see mm, seems like that side's in further than this side so let's see if I can't hit this side more get it more even in there all right going. Do this side more. Trying to get it even. Right. More on this side. Yep. Looks like I'm almost in to place. All right, now I'm going to use my punch to go the rest of the way. Let's see. Start over here. Whoops. Okay, go over here. Sorry. All right, looks good to me. Next, let's put in the tapered spacer. This guy. That guy goes in this way. And then if I remember correctly, uh, all that's next, all that's left is the bearing and then the the grease seal. Here it is. I'm going to go ahead and press this one. Right there. Go ahead and tighten this down. Just go ahead and give it a nice push so you can kind of see it here when you push down all right it's giving it a push and i think i've done more than enough <laughs> maybe a little too much actually on this one. Oh gosh yeah it's more than packed oh boy it's super packed I will have to wipe a lot of this off, so. Good. Yeah, there we go. Because you just want it to be packed inside of the uh, bearing, but not to this extent, maybe. 
So I've got a lot of excess to take off before I put this on the car. I'm just going to brush off this, uh, this dust plate here, um, just clean it off a little bit and then I'll clean off the spindle and re-grease it lightly uh, so, so that I'm ready to reinstall the rotor and the hub. The rotor and hub are about ready to put back on the car, but I will be spraying it down with some brake clean because uh, you need to. This oil needs to come off uh, so that the brake pads work properly. The only reason the oil's there is to keep the rotors from rusting in the first place, so make sure you always, always do that. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my gloves and then uh, take all the oil off with brake clean from both sides of the rotor before I install this thing. Try not to let it get, uh, you know, inside of where the grease is and all the bearings are. So I've just got that covered up so I can get brake cleaner in there. Yes. All right, we're good. This rotor is ready to put on the car. Let's go do it. Here's my outer bearing, inner bearings. All right, outer bearing on, inner bearing on. Okay, now I've got my little spacer. I'm gonna put my um, shims in later uh, after I figure out if I need them or not. Um, so I'll put some shims on later. But for now, I've got my outer bearing, inner bearing. And now, lastly, my castle nut. The reason you need the shims is that you want to make sure that the castle nut is snug but can also have the cotter pin driven through so uh, actually I may not need a shim because this castle nut uh, once I snug it down I think I could put the cotter pin through and I don't all right here's my 29 millimeter and just snugging it That's good. Got my own little cutter pin assortment set here. I 
I'm sure I have something in here that'll work. Let's see what the old one looked like. This is what the old one looked like. Okay, so I'll try to get one that matches that. This one matches it the best, see? So I'll use this one. Oh, really? And the expiration uh -huh. is June 19. Oh, and wow. And they're not even growing mold. Wow. Like, they're still soft. Jeez, man. Like, if, if it was only us eating them. I'm just going to hammer that in with the rubber hammer and then I'm going to spray down the rotor again with uh, um, I'm actually I'll wait for the caliper I'm going to uh, attach the caliper and then I'll spray the rotor down again all right so next let's bust out the new caliper brand new caliper from Moss comes with uh, two copper washers not sure what the second copper washer is for but I know the first copper washer is for the braided brake line to the caliper here. Um, the second copper washer, uh, your guess is as good as mine what it's for. Um, I don't know where else I would need something. Oh, okay, I just checked. The second copper washer is for the other cal caliper. The other caliper comes with zero washers. So one, one washer per caliper. So here's my caliper. It's got its brand new caliper. Pistons, brand new, everything's brand new, good to go, ready to go. So I will go ahead and uh, put these on the car, and then I will put the, the brake pads on and um, add the the uh, pins later, you know, the, um, the, hair, the cotter pins later. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Actually, first, let me braid on this uh, brake hose. I'm going to go ahead and braid it on here with the copper washer. I'm going to do that first. gonna snug this down there we go it's plenty snug down all right it's time to add the caliper on uh, again you know what I'm looking forward to the most when I can finally drive this thing into the garage and work on it in the garage so I'm not constantly running back and forth uh, to find tools and get parts and so on and so forth so let's go ahead and add the caliper on. Okay, so we got to mount this caliper with this bracket on. All right. Um, so we got caliper. Okay. All right, caliper. Ah. Um, bracket bolt. There we go, that's the top one. Let's put the bottom bolt in. And I believe I need to torque this down to about 45 foot-pounds. So I'll need to grab my torque wrench after this is snugged down a little bit. Go ahead and tighten this down to 45 foot-pounds. It's 45. And 45. All right. Now, with those tightened down to 45, I can bend these tabs down to secure the caliper in place. Right, that one is bent down, you see that? And uh, now time for the next one. Let's bend this one up. So 
one's harder to get a hold of. There you go. And that one's bent up, so these bolts are not going anywhere. Next, I will fit, fasten this brake line to the metal brake line here, the braided brake line to the metal brake line. So to do that, I'm gonna move the rotor, you know, I'm gonna turn the steering wheel a little bit so I have more access. Then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up uh, into place. off then you've got this kind of star washer so you've got a nut and you've got a little star washer you put the brake line through the post here you put the star washer down you put the nut on there because what the nuts gonna do is hold this brake line into place I'm just going to fasten this down as tight as I can um, so it doesn't move. See, so it, that it's secure in place. Okay, so I'm just going to snug this down here so the brake line's not going anywhere. There we go. That's pretty snug right there. That's not going anywhere. So now I can attach the brake line to the new line, the new braided line. 15 seems to work. Let's go ahead and snug this down now. I'm going to go ahead and get it, get it on there. Alright, yeah, it's snug in. Let's get it as snug as I can. Avoid any leaks, obviously. There, that's snug. That's right on there. Okay, this brake line is good and snug. Add some copper entices to the back here. I don't need a ton. I'm going to add some and then I'm going to spread it around with my finger. Okay, so that's about how much I'm going to add. That's already a lot. That's, <laughs> that's quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth that around with my finger all over. Obviously, don't get this on the pad side. That would be bad news bears if you got this on the pad side, but on the back side's fine. And also, uh, this side here where it touches the caliper and the top where it touches the caliper as well is perfectly fine. So look at this. Again, I'm gonna add it here at the top, here at the bottom, and maybe around the edges of the bottom here and the edges of the top here. Anywhere where it might encounter metal, metal to metal contact. Um, that should do it. Um, I may also want to put a little bit back here and I'll tell you why, because that's where the hardware is gonna go. Um, so maybe that will help as well on the back here where the hardware goes as well. All right, so it's all nicely greased up and ready for me to install. So let's go ahead and install this onto the car without getting mm, anti-seize all over my camera. Ready to install on our new caliper. Here's our caliper. And let me set you guys up to see the process here of putting this guy in slide it right in here there we go and hope it doesn't pop out while we're gone which I think it, it wants to so in the meantime I'm just gonna throw this cotter pin here to keep it in just temporarily all right so let me go do the exact same thing to the other pad and I'll be right back all right I'm back ready to install this guy Okay, all right, so here's the other lubed up brake pad, lubed up with anti-seize. This anti-seize is going to prevent squeaking. So let me move this out a little bit, get this guy placed. Okay, so I'm gonna place this pad inside. 
there we go like a glove and I will fit this cotter pin here to hold everything in place temporarily let me double check here yeah that was the right way the first time let's leave it alone because it is perfect there's the first cotter pin now let's put the other bracket on again I'm going to add some anti-seize to this I'm gonna place it on There we go. Nice. Alright. So now I'm going to pull these pins so that they're snug. Right, the pins are in place and secured. The pads are in place and secured. The brake line is fixed. The rotor is in place. I'm gonna wipe the rotor itself down with a little more brake clean just to make sure it's totally free from any kind of grease or oil or antices. And then I'm ready to go ahead and fix the master cylinder bleed the brakes and put the wheels back on.